So, first of all, I just, before we start, I want to say thank you for the invitation one more time, and it was a pleasure to interact with people here and to share the work that we're doing at Universal Florida to help the commercial beekeepers. Uh, I want to say that right now because when I organize this talk, normally it's some people are going to hate me after this talk. <laughs> some people are going to like what I have to say. So let's see. And I did some research here. I have some personal rules to, to have this feeling. Uh, so let's see how it goes. So after interact with many of the people here, uh, the beekeepers, uh, regulatory people, uh, have a sense of what the people are doing. I rearranged my talk to try to provide information that I have that might be more uh, relevant for what you guys were talking about and maybe you want them more. Uh, the title is still relevant. Um, so what, what I decided to do is to bring stories that I heard from the field, things that I experienced myself, things that make me think about things and how the world works. Uh, some because I've been on two sides, the academia side, and I also was a beekeeper myself with my family before, and now work with directly with commercial guys. There is a, there is a bridge that needs to be, you know, we need to find a way to, to put academia and the commercial world to work together. And I think things are not going, at least in Florida, I don't know if it's the, sa it's the same here. Um, but I think we need to start conversations. Uh, and I think uh, I'm going to start to try to start those conversations. And, uh, because uh, commercial beekeepers need to put uh, food in their table. And they need to make decisions. And those decisions are very important to them. And the, the weight of whatever the academia say is a lot of weight for them. And they take that in consideration. And there is a lot of. Uh, not a misinformation, but I think the commercial, commercial area don't understand how science works very well. Uh, and there is a lot of uh, the news and the media, how the people put the news and every new discovery, a new scientific article become a buzz. And, and then the, you just see the commercial guys going to one side to another like crazy, trying to get information for, for decisions for their lives. They start to create some anxiety and people start to get frustrated. and. And then the tensions start to, so I think we need to start this conversation. So let me put examples of things that I saw and we, things that I uh, experienced myself. And we start those conversations. You guys can stop me at any time and ask questions. Please let me know if you have ex uh, similar experiences. And you, yeah, we go from there. Where are the clicker? Here we go. OK. So as you guys know, I'm traveling like a maniac for a year and a half now, visiting dozens and dozens of operations in the state of Florida, different sizes, different goals. Uh, and I could see a lot of different things. I, 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 I literally live with the crew, hands on, the, the head of the crew and the, the beekeeper, the owner of the operation always asking me to infiltrate. They, they, they want me as a spy kind of thing because I understand Spanish and this kind of thing. So I, that's not the way it's supposed to work. But I could see a lot of things. So I'm going to talk about some of these problems, issues. I don't know if you can define like that. But uh, let's see how you guys take that. Problem number one that I saw that create a lot of tensions and stories and conflicts was water source. I don't know where you guys get your water to make your feed, to make your food for the bees. I had experience from the same, in the same operation. I, I measured the pH of the water in different parts of the operation. And there was differences of two pH. Some were basics, some were acids. And when you make a food with different water and you try to compare results with your neighbor or things like that, you're never going to get consistency. Consistency is something that we need to be looking for all the time. But is you guys, commercial guys, understand that very well. Consistency in beekeeping is gone. We don't have that anymore. And we need to be very f 
focus to try to create the systems to, to have a life instead of be constantly concerned. And we're gonna talk more about systems and moving on from now. So pay attention where you're getting your water from. Try to measure different, if it's quality water. Some people like to accumulate water from the rain. There is a lot of ways to get water. Uh, try to be consistent in your own operation so you can make decisions based not in, in, in try to control the variables. Yeah, that's very important. Communication and standardization. What I, what, what, I, what I mean by that? This is between beekeepers. I caught many times beekeepers saying X to each other and they mean different things between them. And we're gonna get between the crew. I saw beekeepers saying language, they truly believe they're communicating with each other, but talking about something else. And for me, that was an outsider, it was hard to pick that up, but after living with them and, oh, but my friend said that, and said, oh, yeah, he said that. Then I go back there, no, but he said that. And it took him a while for, to understand that they're talking about the box of the hive. Or I can give you examples like uh, called one kind of box X and kind different box Y. And they start to mix names and become a mess. I don't know how to, I don't know if everybody brought that up to you guys before, or if you experienced that. Uh, another thing that I got in the field now, working with the crud that I said, I, I, I ask 15 different guys, they show me different things, they call me, Umberto, I got the crud, come. Three hours driving back to South Florida, and I go there, take pictures, okay. They'll go to another guy in the north in Panhandle area, five hours driving, boom. I have seven different symptoms, and they call the same thing. There is no, it's hard to get the standardization that we need to, to pursue as a, as a science. So, trying to be, it's not an advice, but it's just a fact, and we need to maybe start to talk about that. The same five or six different symptoms, different photos that I have, and they call the same thing between them. So, let's try to make sure we talk about the same things, uh, because there are a lot of stories come from this, mis it's not a miscommunication, it's just a fact. I just want to brought that up to attention of people. Miscommunication, what I want to address with that is uh, how many of the commercial guys here, if you need to scale from one to 10, the communication between the master beekeeper and the crew, how much you trust your guys from one to 10 to do exactly what you ask them to do? <laughs> All right, I got that part there. So I, that was a big problem because when I infiltrate myself with the crew and go with them and work in the hives myself, you know, hands-on things to see details because details today in beekeeping matters is not like before. You just leave your hive there, go fishing and hunting, and then come back, you have honey. It doesn't work like that anymore. When the guy said, comprendo, senor, that means 300 different things. They got different ways. Make sure you train your guys to do what you want. Otherwise, you're gonna get in trouble. And they're gonna say, yes, I did, sir. Yes, senor, yeah. It is, it is fascinating because they come from different cultures and they learn in different ways. And they, when they got here, communication is a problem, myself included. I still having problems sometimes that I believe that I communicate myself and I didn't. So make sure you test in a very practical way what you expect from, you, from the crew. Otherwise, you think, even if you have this strategy, you come here, you learn, you prepare a protocol that never gonna be executed. So to try to pay attention on that to make sure it's gonna be realized the way you want, uh, work the way you want. Okay, management. Um, what I can say, by the conversations here and by the silence with the commercial beekeepers that I talk here, I can tell that you guys are successful. I'm not gonna, gonna speculate, but I think you guys are 
good beekeepers and they're making a lot of money, from what I understand. Because after these travels and, and get the numbers and comparing with people, different protocols, different uh, management systems, and I, I could overlay people that work in the same area. In, in Florida, we are, by law, you need to tell where the, where the hives are. So you need to, by law, so the state know where the beekeeper works, so we can overlay laps of different beekeepers, we can try to correlate, and, and then I know the guys are successful that retired with 40 years old and moved to the Keys, and now they're millionaires. And the guys are still suffering and in the same location. And the thing that I, after, I was just trying to make sure if I can, hey, of course, there is not hard data on that, but my observation is when I put those maps together and I see the guys working in the same place, the only thing that I saw that was different between these two guys where the one is really management oriented. The guy is picky, really picky with system. And he keep with the system even if he knows he gonna f there is something indication that he's gonna fail in the area. <coughs> he keep with the system until he see this. He doesn't change things all the time. So he have a system, even if he's gonna lose something in that year, he knows he, w where to play the game before he start to jump from one boat to another boat to another boat, uh, one article, one, uh, one researcher say that. So the guys are <coughs> screaming, losing a lot of hives, are the ones that are struggling and do not have a management system that is really tough. So I, if we can, and, and I didn't see anything, anybody here complaining, I can tell you guys are good. And that's my rule, I don't know, if maybe it's a Canadian thing, you guys like to be, don't say anything. But if I'm right from my rules, talking with these guys, I wanna be a friend of you guys. You, you guys are doing good. So, so this is my, my advice here. It's an observation too, I don't have much hard data on that, it's more about my visits, but people, there are successful people out there and they're quiet and they're just, I can sell some nukes if you want. If you know, there's, you know, a lot of people are losing bees, but there are people that are not losing bees. So it is possible. And the difference that I saw, management. The guy have a plan. And he followed the plan. If he starts to move to another direction for the, the system, he's able to play with the variables to adjust. And then he can go home, enjoy time with family, do not have back problems. The guys have a system, so play with your systems, try to be more managing oriented because there are examples out there of people that are very successful. And I think you guys are, I know that. Uh, I already talked about the feeding, but this is something that I saw and I could, I have some data because there are so many different companies now that are offering all kinds of stuff. Um, I work in one of those. Uh, and I was exposed to a different reality of, about, about what people want. Uh, I, I like to give this example of things that I saw uh, in a commercial world, in the industry side. The, I, to me, it's disgusting. There is this guy, that his job is to go to conventions like that to hear the stories so they can make a product that fit the story, just to use the beekeepers that buy by confirmation bias. <coughs> so they put everything together, put sugar, create a story that fit whatever you're listening and enjoying in at the moment, and then the beekeeper, aha, I knew it, and buy. Terrible, terrible kind of situation. So there is this exposition of, because beekeeping starts to be more, you know, the whole world know about bees now. Bees dying, everybody have an understanding about the importance of bees. And just like a, a hive is a concentration of guys, have, have these guys that want money from you guys. So be, you know, do test, use the government. You, you, you guys have a team here, they're doing a great job by the talks they give. They know what they're doing. They can test things for you guys. If they are busy, uh, this, the, the, the program that I'm developing at the University of Florida that I hope is gonna expand is to do that kind of tests uh, to help. 
At least if we cannot do ourselves, we go try to teach you how to do it in a way that you can do yourself and be more comfortable with the results because another thing is each operation is a different story. We go to one operation, second operation, different problems. There is no silver bullet. You always need to be adjusting and, and find something that works for you. So regarding the feeding, there is a lot of choices, a lot of things that attract bees, a lot of uh, and beekeepers like to do their own recipes and put things together and they, they start to, oh yeah, it really works, yeah, because they're feeding. They're... So this guy called me, Umberto, I'm, I'm losing 50% of my hives, I don't know what's going on. I said, okay, the guy has some reputation in Florida, three hours later I was there driving. And then I look around, said, you see, everything's dead. And then I look around, open the hives, well hive. He says, you're right, sir, everything is dead. The grass is dead, the small hive beetle larvae is dead, everything around, the ants were dead, everything. He said, sir, there's something with the feeding, I guess. There is something, no possible. The bees were enjoying that. They drink the whole thing, no way, no way. I didn't have any, any other hypothesis in my, what? Because everything was clear to me, everything was dead around. I don't know what happened. I got the feed, bring to the lab to do a very standard sugar water, new emerged bees, the bees, the mortality of the bees with sugar water. With the feed, they die 50% faster than, than the control. And the, what the, the feed, uh, the, the beekeeper is saying, the bees love it. And I test that too, with the same feeder. Yes, it's true. The bees were attracted more and drinking more of that thing for some reason. But when you look at the data, they're dying faster. How can we see that in a, in a, in a field? Because we trust the bees sometimes. They're feeding, they know what they're doing. Not all the time, because there is a lot of the attractant, and the company is going to do that, trust me. They're gonna find what the, whatever attack the bees because that's the measurement that beekeepers have. When the beekeepers look to be attracted to something, beekeepers like. So be try to do tests in your operation. Get 5% of your bees. Test them those two before you do a super test with 100% of your operation. Try to be more, uh, have this, uh, it, it, in Florida, we have some commercial guys. They're building their own labs now just to do those tests. And then they, and they, they hire me on the weekends to go there and, and teach the people and, and do the protocols and to do this test with every single new product that come up to the market. They already have a system to put in place. Instead of to apply to 50% of the operation, they have a system and they can, one guy, a lot of, a lot of guys feed them with money to do the test and they spread the, the results between them. Is a, is a, you guys know how that works, with the communications and how it works. So, yeah, be, be, be concerned and, and to, in favor of the companies. There are companies out there that are trying really hard to bring good stuff. So I, I know a couple of them. They're very transparent with me. Uh, I enjoy working with them and I need to be fair with the companies too. It's not easy to bring something to the market that works there. So, and it's really hard, for, it's even harder for the, the, the people that wants to bring something that works because they need to pass through a lot of different tests and they're, they, they're really concerned. So they need to do more work comparing with the crooks. They just put things together, put sugar and put a story in a beautiful video. So we need to find a way to help and, f and screen the good and the bad Somehow, I'm, I don't have the recipe, but it's something that I, f that I wanna bring from the field, something that I see, and if it was with my dad, I would be pissed if somebody did that with my dad. That's, that's the reason why I, I like to talk about that. So now I wanna jump to another subject that we talk about here, about you know, switching gears a little bit, uh, about uh, management too, things that happen in the field that I did some experiments and I'm not completely 100% sure about the results, but I wanna bring anyways because that was my deal with 
beekeepers. Beekeepers were upset with the academia because the academia takes so long to do something or to release any information or anything. What I, what I decided to do is to have conversations. And this is not confirmed. I need to repeat that. I, I, I need more information just to keep things in mind, okay? Just, it's not a scientific, I, I didn't publish that yet, but it's something that got my attention that I wanna bring to you guys. So I worked with the USDA for many years, and there was a USDA in Beltsville, Maryland. They have one lab, and then we moved to another lab. I spent three years in that lab, and then we realized we forgot in the old lab some old equipment, and there was uh, hive tools with wax and propolis on it. And then we said, oh, that's nice. Let's, let's do an experiment here. I, I want to know what we have in that three years old you know, wax and propolis. If there is anything there that's still viable, pathogen or something? Apparently, yes. So this is the, the experiment. We have these three years old uh, hives. I scrap it up, all the, the material from that. And, and then I, I did a, 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 I tried to wash them and get the liquid, tried to, I cut them in little pieces and wash them for many hours. And then I get this, uh, inject, inject the liquid in two different hives. This is hive one, hive two. And I have the controls here. One I injected with PBS, another I, I didn't inject at all. Uh, one, I pasteurized, so I really uh, I, um, boiled and cold that material that I got, just to, if it were something alive there, I was supposed to kill it, try it too. And then I inject one with the pure extract from the, from the wax and propolis from that. And there was a big difference in mortality from these two. One is almost significant statistically, one was significantly statistically from, so maybe genetic of the bees uh, differentiate here somehow. But I did this only once, so just to keep that in mind. And then I will, what, let's test those liquid to see what we have here. Here we go. The former wing virus were there and propagating in this non-pasteurized bees. We, I found much more the former wing virus in, in the two colonies. Two possible explanations. I inject the former wing virus, or I inject something that I couldn't kill with the boil and freeze that activate the former wing virus that was already there. So if I need to pick these two stories, I would say that maybe there is a big chance that the former wing virus were able to be there for a long time. So I don't know. Just to keep in mind that our procedure to go in a commercial, especially in a commercial uh, operation that we have, every operation that their own rules, 30 second rules to get in and out from a hive, boom, 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 and do 400 hives in a day. So we might be spreading things very fast and if we do not take care of that. And a way that we are doing, we have the smokers and we have, I have an extra smoke that every time from one hive to another, I burn burn, burn, or have a system that you can burn and move, boom, boom, next, next, next. That's the way we're doing. Maybe you guys smarter can come up with something more interesting. But I, I'm really concerned the way we spreading things right now, especially in a commercial operation, that we need to be really fast. So what we got here? Okay, these I brought because I heard Samantha saying very interesting things. So I. I want to share something that I got here. So the commercial guys were asking me if a combination of uh, different mitocide treatments could have benefic beneficiate somehow to put different strips, different kinds and sources and so there is only one way to find out. So, and I did with Apicin APVAR. Um, First, first I did in the laboratory. I never, because I didn't work with that before, and I wanna know, I don't like assumptions when I start to work with something. I, I start from the very beginning. I just exposed the Ipstan and APVAR to new emerged bees, and they 
they die in 48 hours in a cup. I said, I did something wrong because they're not supposed to be toxic to bees. I repeat that seven times now. And the, it's still the same. Apparently, new emerged bees are very uh, toxic to Apis 10 and Apivar. Everybody that do resistance tests, they follow uh, Dr. Patty's test. And they use a combination. That's why we were having that conversation. They have adult bees and combination of ages there. But when I got new emerged bees and exposed to Apis 10 and Apivar, they die. So what, what can we do with that information? I don't know. I just start to think about management. You know, when you need to put those stri strips in, there is a chance the new emerged ones, you're going to have a reduction of population somehow. We don't have measurements that. This is only laboratory KGBs. Uh, and that happened. So I don't know what to do with that. We're following up with the experiment. But as I promised, I, every time that I see it, this is a, a very confident. It happened seven times already in my hand. So new emerged bees die in contact with AP stand and AP var. What can we do with the information? Let's find out. We're going to continue this information. Maybe next year, you guys bring me back. I'll, I'll be happy to continue this. So, and then I want to see, is this effective? My, this is mite count. Mites per 100 bees. So we have uh, my, my minimum number for a few trials is 30 highs per group. So we're still counting. We don't have all the numbers here, as you can see, they're spread. But one thing for sure, AP stand day zero, day zero, all the mites that we found in the apiary, we have apiaries infested uh, on purpose, just for uh, research uh, purposes. So, and then we treated AP stand. Actually, they love it. There is more mites now, some of them. It's not working. The same thing with APVAR. APVAR didn't work in that experiment for some reason. Did I mess up? I don't think so. There is a possibility. I never exclude myself doing beekeeper stuff. A combination of those, both. I still need some data here, but I don't think this is going to change. We're still counting. There is an army of students counting mites for me right now. Um, didn't change. I don't think. I don't think they're working anymore. At least in Florida, stage of Florida, maybe that was a batch that we bought. There is a possibility. We're going to change the batch. We're going to buy a new batch and try it again. But based on what I'm seeing in the field and now from data from that I saw around here, that there is a possibility things are not working the way they worked before. And I got a call yesterday, Umberto, can I suit them? Can I use your data? Can I suit them? I already I have some guys want to suit them. So this is very serious stuff. Because those companies try, you know, they sell something that's supposed to work. And we, if we prove that didn't work, that's going to be messy. So talking about amitract resistant, I made a video about that. I interviewed uh, Dr. Uh, oh my God, Frank uh, Rinkovich from USDA in Baton Rouge. I made a video about amitract resistance. You guys can find it in my YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, Another thing, I, I made some notes here regarding somebody asked about probiotics. Yes, there is a probiotic against AFB. It's a Canadian group that it's called Biopatty, and the company behind is called Seed. And they just published a, couple, a month ago uh, an article uh, talking about the effect of the probiotics against AFB. So it does, just to, to answer, I don't know who uh, asked that. Regarding the protein, di uh, dye the protein and follow them around the bees to see where they're going. Uh, if you want to talk with Emily, she's doing right now, our master's student, she's doing right now with a bunch of different protein patties, and she, she would love to, to, to talk with you guys and share her results. There are indications that some protein patties that just throw it away, and it's just money going to the flush, and some protein patties that are really being ingested and consumed. We didn't, we are not able to, to she's working now and co convert mass 
and protein to see if there is a correlation. Uh, so she's working on that. If somebody, one more, follow Emily. Emily, our master's student, she's doing huge field trials with different protein patties right now. Uh, I already talked about that, systems. Uh, yeah, we're gonna be delivering results and, and in our Melito, Melitos files, uh, follow them. Uh, gonna be asking Amy to post things related to things I see in the field pretty soon. Uh, ready to talk about that, that there is something here. Oh yes, okay, now let's talk about that. Um, where is it? <coughs> something that I saw in the field that is changing right now, the younger generation now, they're becoming more very scientific oriented. And I think that is interesting. They come, they want to learn, and they're creating the system based and science. Uh, and, and they open up to me to talk about the, what I already started conversations here about they don't trust the researchers. And that really kind of hurt at the beginning, but after they open up, I, I know the family, I know the kids, we start to be a kind of part of the same group. I kind of understand their points. I kind of understand the point of the academia. And I think the really, what really is the difference is I think they don't, People don't understand what science is. We fight between us in the scientific community. We're always looking for truth. And one experiment does not mean we found the truth. We, you know, takes time. What, what I think the commercial guys or beekeepers need to learn is how to interpret the interpretation of this fight, not fight, you know, scientific argumentation. And that takes time. Until we, okay, there is like climate change. We know there is some guys that do not believe that. They, they, they claim they have results about that, yes. But 90% of the scientists are convinced about something. So there is a difference when one article says something and then 300 other articles say the opposite of that. So I think the beekeepers need to start to understand how science works and do not be following only and the, the scientific journalism also is a problem because they don't take in consideration that and just, they want the news. Whatever come up first, they want the news. And they say things and, and people follow this, oh, it's science, oh, it's science, it's science. And they just go, they don't, because there is a lot of weight for the things that we say. And I think for the academia part, we need to be more responsible for the things we say. Uh, we need to say in a way that, I don't know, I don't know how to, how to fix the problem, but I think we need to start the conversations. And the commercial guys and the beekeepers need to understand how science works and do not just jump the cliff because they heard something that was scientific. Because science, the find of truth, takes time, a lot of time and effort. And it's, 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 it's very uh, hurtful to see this when people said, I don't trust researchers or, when I visited a commercial guy, they just point a gun in my face. Get out of my property! I don't like research. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> my father is kind of like that, so <laughs> so I'm used to that. So, so that follow us again a podcast. We're going to be talking about problem that we see again. If you guys can follow me up there, that would be appreciate appreciated. Thank you again. One more time, I appreciate very much the attention of you guys. Thank you very much.